then a series of the uplights across the front. So one, two, uh, three, four, five of the kind of standard ones, three of the brighter ones. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you wanna see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's gonna look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hey, Christina, thanks uh, for the pictures. Um, you've got a great house here, and I would definitely show you um, a couple different options and some different things that you can do. Um, so I think the first thing I would do is really uh, highlight the brickwork on the house here. So how uh, we would do that is uh, just using some uplights like this. The only thing I will talk about is these come standard with a 4-watt LED bulb in them, uh, which I'll refer to as a 20 watt equivalent. Uh, but for some areas of the house, I'm going to talk about upgrading those to a 35 watt equivalent, which is about a five watt LED bulb. Um, and what that's going to do now is um, it's just going to do a better job of getting to some of these higher peak areas. So what I would do is with that uh, uplight that I just talked about, I would try and get two of them kind of one um, just at the edge of the window here and one at the edge of the window here that are kind of shining upright you only want them about 12 to 18 inches back from the house and have them shining fairly upright so it's really um, just kind of washing the nice brickwork you have here uh, so i would definitely do that if you wanted to put something in front here another light that i like to use to kind of create a nice balance of some backlighting and forefronting and higher lighting and lower lighting is just a wash light like this um, these are great for anything that's a little bit lower a little bit wider but what i would probably do is I'd probably have my two uplights um, backwashing the back of the house, and then I would have one of those wash lights kind of in front here that highlights the uh, front rose bush area. And then uh, over on, on this side of the house, I would use that same light, and I would have uh, a light here, I would have one here, and I would have one here. And then for this section here, I would probably have two of those same lights, but this is where I would upgrade to that 35 watt equivalent one, just because I want to make sure I'm getting the light all the way to the top. Um, and I would probably have three of those here, kind of one on the corner, one on the corner, and then one in the middle here. And then along this side, I mean, you could do a couple things. I'm always a bigger fan of using like, you know, wash lights and uplighting. Uh, but if you have a pathway that you want to light a little bit too, what you could do is just stagger a couple path lights in between where you have your uplight. So for example, if you have an uplight here, you might have one path light on the corner here. You might have one kind of in front of this window. You have your uplight. You have another path light here, you have your up light. Um, you might throw another path light in here, you have an up light, path light, up light, path light, right? Um, so really you're just creating a nice balance and not overdoing um, the path lights and you're having you know, some up lighting in the background and then some forefront path lighting that's gonna light the, um, the walkway area. And then what you can do is if you find that it's still a little dark with some of these rose bushes, this is where I might try and add you know, a wash light or two in here, maybe a couple of those just to highlight some of the nice uh, rose bushes. Uh, so maybe three or four of those along there. Um, yeah, and you've got lots of room for that. And I think it would well be well worth highlighting some of those uh, rose bush areas. Um, along this side here, I mean, this is where I really like focusing on some of the larger trees and some of the trees that are, um, I mean, you could definitely throw a little up light on this one, and I think I'll, I'll kind of leave that up to you based on budget. I would really try and focus on, because I think you, the house is going to stand out, and then you've got some nice large feature trees like this one, where I would try and get one, if not two, up lights um, on these larger trees. And the reason I like doing that, too, is because um, they're such big, intense canopies that I really want to make this... Um, a highlight so rather than putting you know one light here and one light here i would almost rather just make this one stand out and i would try and get one of those up lights kind of on both sides and again um, anything that's over 20 feet or so you want to use that slightly brighter that 35 watt equivalent lamp in there um, just to push that light up a little bit higher the other reason i like using them on both sides is because then it creates two viewing angles so that as you're coming up the driveway it's lit up really nice from this side and then as you're leaving you have it lit up really nice from from this side um, moving into the backyard here, I mean, this is again where I would probably just, I wouldn't overdo it with path lights. I just find people use too many, uh, path and garden lights a lot of the times, but I would try and get like a small wash light 
on a feature like this just to kind of help that stand out and then as you go around the the property so yeah for example you have a wash light kind of shining out here i would probably try and get an up light uh, on this one over here and then if you wanted to put you know maybe a path and garden light and a path and garden light kind of in the roses just to highlight those areas i think that would just be a nice subtle uh, way of doing that um, and then around the back you could kind of do the same thing i would definitely try and focus an up light on this tree uh, especially with the purple leaves these always look great and then in this back corner if this is on your property which it does look like it is i would really put some focus and some emphasis on lighting this guy um, the only difference with this one is you might not be able to get because it doesn't look like there's a bed around there uh, so you might not be able to put an up light like this and you definitely don't want to put this in the grass where you got to trim and mow around but if you used an in-ground light like this we'll do the same effect uh, the difference is you can bring this a little further back have it right in the grass so it's flush so you can just mow over it um, you can still upgrade this to that slightly brighter bulb in there which again I would do uh, upgrade that to that 35 watt equivalent lamp um, and then I would probably have two of those. I would kind of bring them out a little bit further and have one maybe here and over here that are shining uh, fairly upright. So you're really uh, getting some light up into the canopy and featuring all the nice uh, branching structures and stuff that you have uh, around the pool area. Um, and yeah, I would keep it pretty simple with that. I think if you did that, you'd have a really good um, design. So, you know, in summary, you get one of the standard up lights here and over on this tree you'd have two of the in-ground lights that are a little bit higher intensity here um, maybe a couple path and garden lights in this bed just to highlight some of the rose areas a little wash light here um, and then along the front of the house i would definitely try and get um, two of the higher intensity up lights on here and then a series of the up lights across the front so one two uh, three, four, five of the kind of standard ones, three of the brighter ones, and then a series of a few path lights and potentially a couple wash lights on a couple of these bushes, uh, the rose bushes, if you wanted to highlight those. So um, let me know what you think of those ideas, Christina. You can always go on the website, just kind of start adding those things up um, to get an idea of what you need for your project. Uh, you can easily fit all of that on a transformer. Uh, like this um, the only thing is you might need a little bit more wire than what comes in a wiring kit like this this is a um, 250 foot roll but you'll probably need closer to 500 for um, probably around 200 in the front and, and maybe 250 to 300 in the back um, but you can tie them all into the same transformer uh, it comes with all the connectors and everything you need but uh, it's a good way to kind of get started and uh, put some pricing together for you or if you like any of the ideas and you want to just send me a list we can always help you do that too and let me know if there's anything else I can help with. Thanks, Christina. Um, the first thing I've done, like I always say, is I've just kind of gone and I've laid out all my lights because I want to make sure I have the appropriate amount of lights. And then from there, I can calculate how many watts I need and make sure I've got my proper um, transformer sized and everything. And although I've already kind of done those calculations first, it's always a good idea just to double check. Um, from there, as you can see, I've just laid out all my wire on the ground. I'm running everything from my last light way over there um, and off to my next light again that way I know how much wire I need I kind of know my running path and a general rule of thumb too is you always just want to make your life as simple as possible um, with LED for this one we even have like um, we probably got about 350 feet of cable going out uh, this is a huge acreage is about seven acres I'll give you guys a idea of that later um, but even with that and the amount of lights and everything voltage drop is just not something I'm really concerned about with this one again because we're using a good quality light um, we're using large enough wire we're not trying to save dollars using a smaller wire which I'd always recommend go with at least 12 to low voltage uh, direct burial wire or um, it's just it's the easiest to work with and you go with something smaller you might save a couple bucks but then you're really limiting the capacity of, of what you can add on so that's pretty much it and then um, we're doing a lot of uh, up lighting and down lighting on this on this project and um, this is kind of like our staple fixture that we use for a lot of our jobs, the RS um, Uplight. Uh, the reason I like it for so many reasons um, and why it works good for this is um, it comes with a really durable ground stake, which you don't always find with a lot of the lights and stuff you find on Amazon and Home Depot. It's a pretty cheap one and it breaks really easy. These stakes won't break. The light is... Uh, is going to get hit by a tractor might get knocked out of the threads but these will not break and you can usually just screw them back in so i like that 
I like to have a, a 10 foot lead wire. So this is great when we're mounting them in trees and stuff because um, it just it gives me a lot of room to play around. If I come back at night and I want to move it, I can move it you know, within 10 feet either way and I don't have to remake connections. So I, I love that. Um, the wire is really easy to work with, cheaper models. Um, I know because sometimes we use different lights for different things. It's just, it's not as easy to work with. All this stuff adds up, which makes a, a quality light. If something's really cheap, there's generally a reason for that. So um, the other reason I like it is if you've had a chance to work with it or have tried or try it before you buy it, like you'll know um, this is an aluminum fixture, but this does not feel like most aluminum fixtures that you find on Amazon and Home Depot. Um, get our try before you buy it light. You can see how durable this thing is. Um, it's literally bulletproof. I've been installing these in trees before and I've dropped these from 25 feet and this thing does not break. Um, so uh, a really good light. And then the other reason I like it, especially for a lot of do-it-yourselfers, and I get flack from, uh, from professional lighting designers all the time saying, oh, integrated, integrated, integrated is the way to go. I, personally, I still like this. I like getting a good quality fixture and I like getting a good quality bulb again you get, um, you get some of the cheaper stuff you find online and you're gonna have problems with the bulb. They just don't last as long. They draw more power than they say, so that's where people run into voltage drops. And I get that email, uh, I don't know how many times a week, hey, I bought this system, I won't say the name, uh, from a big box store and I hooked up all my lights. I've got 20 lights and they just, they won't come on. And it's because um, the lights are drawing a lot more power than the box actually says and that's just based on efficiency and quality and all that kind of stuff and they can't get their system to go so I mean if you're doing a very small system that's fine but if you're getting upwards of 15 20 lights plus and you're still going with some of those cheaper models there's a good chance you're gonna have some problems um, not so much with this um, the other reason I like it is the components are really easy I'll talk about some troubleshooting stuff uh, later that uh, really allows you to play around and troubleshoot with this and the other thing I like too is on this property So we've got some trees that are I, I don't know. I'm looking at them here I say they're 80 to 100 feet high So I want to be able to put something in that's bright enough And I like the ability that if I put something in and it's either too bright or not bright enough I can just go and I can switch out a bulb. I don't have to change the fixture I don't have to mess around with trying to change an LED board. I can just basically pop in a new bulb um, try something a little bit brighter and see how that looks. So um, that's one of the reasons I really, really like these ones. Um, it just gives you a whole bunch of flexibility. I know a lot of people ask about beam spreads and, and intensities and all that kind of stuff. Well, this really allows you to play around with that because even as your landscape grows, as trees get bigger and stuff, you might want to upgrade how bright some of your bulbs are. Um, really good option. Again, uh, nice waterproof seal that's another thing that just makes fixtures last I mean there's so many reasons and you know we're on a on an island here that gets a lot of rain in the winter time so I want to make sure we got something that's super waterproof that's why we're using our waterproof connections and everything but um, really wanted to give you a feel for why we're using uh, these lights on this project and with so many they're by far our most popular one um, so yeah we'll we'll kind of keep going with the install here uh, we're just gonna get our stakes um, in the ground that is the one thing uh, I did another video whether it's gonna be part of this one or not where we did some deck uh, lighting where your rubber mallet is really uh, is your best friend it comes in all our kits um, for a reason because we use it a ton and that's usually what I use when I'm securing uh, especially here because we're on an island this is rock so I need to really be able need to really be able to get that into the ground there's no way I'm doing that if I just got to step on it so you'll use this for so many different reasons um, when we're mounting some tree lights too I'll show you some ways that we do that uh, but yeah anyway um, we'll move on with it we'll screw our light in we'll make our wiring connections um, a nice thing too or, or little trick is I'm um, always trying to keep the adjustment screw another reason I like this light there's a little adjustment screw at the base so you can come and you can just kind of uh, adjust it to go more upright or down if you want to um, and it's a really durable one it's not some cheap little screw thing that some of the lights again have online um, and then uh, the last thing I was gonna mention um, I totally forgot my train of thought but uh, but the adjustment oh yeah and that's what it was is a general rule of thumb whenever you're installing up lights you almost always want to have them more upright than you actually think I see so many people angle them at the objects um, and you typically get a lot better effect if you're angling it more upright um, than you think. So that's just a good general rule of thumb. But regardless, come back at night, 
make any adjustments, make sure you're getting the right effect. Even on a property this side, even with how many lights like these we've installed, I'm still coming back at night and I wanna make sure that I'm getting the effect that I look for um, with the design and everything that we've come up with. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys got some great do-it-yourself landscape lighting tips. Now, please be sure to go to our website at lightingdoctor.ca and check out our how-to page. It's full of great resources from our podcast to our video to our most frequently asked questions. And also check out our Try It Before You Buy It light where you can actually go now and get one of our premium quality up lights and a King Innovation Insta light, which is basically a battery pack now that allows you to go and run those lights and test them out on your pop property. Try it for 14 days. If you don't love it, send it back to us and we'll give you a full refund. And if not, you keep the light at a discounted rate and go and buy what you need for your project. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to leave us a comment. We love your feedback. Have a great day.